That is green. No worries. Um, it's not a huge class. So honestly, if you want to keep yourself unmuted, that's totally fine. It's sometimes lonely when it's really quiet over here teaching the class. But if you want to mute, um, that's fine too. Whatever works for you. Um, yeah, I wish we were, when we usually do this vintage tree class, um, usually we're, um, I make cookies and we have punch and it's Christmas music. <laughs> so um, it's a little different, but um, the end result will be an awesome tree that you can put out for years and years and years and to pass it down in the family. It'll just be like one of those vintage trees that your grandma had. You know, everybody seems to have somebody in their family who had a tree like this. Um, so one second, I'm just gonna record because we have a couple people who did not um, come and they wanted to record. So, um, so let's start with just making sure you have all the supplies. So yes, you should have this ugly brown color. Um, I gave you a different amounts based on the size of the tree that you had. Um, this is um, a special kind of glaze. Um, it reacts to the heat. So it is going to go on this ugly brown. And in the firing process, it reacts with the heat and it will become this beautiful glass green. Um, and the glass green is... Um, it moves, it's a real glaze. So a lot of times when you come to our studio, you'll use the glazes and um, they don't move. The under glazes that we have, they stay right where you put them. These, this glass green actually kind of just um, picks up the texture on the tree and it's called breaking and pooling. So as it moves, when it melts on the tree, it'll pool in the crevices and it'll kind of break on the higher surfaces. And it just does that naturally and you get just the full texture of the piece. So yes, it looks ugly, but it will fire beautifully. You gotta trust the process. <laughs> um, and then let's see, so you should have that color, that, those um, green color. Um, you should have a red and a green and a black extra little colors. You should have a bigger brush and a skinny liner brush. You should have a pen on hand if you happen to, you can grab one at some point. Um, a cup with water, which I didn't get myself water, but I can go grab it, and a pipe cleaner. And then last but not least, you should also have a little pink paper with your holly on it. And I also gave you a paper plate it may not work with that giant tree. I think Stacy has the giant, or is it Jen who has the gigantic tree? Jen? Okay. <laughs> um, somebody's got the gigantic one. It uh, may not work, but I um, sometimes use it as my turntable. My, you know, in the studio, we have the fancy turntables, but you know, when, when you're at home, you got to make do with what you got. <laughs> um, so if it doesn't, if it, it might help a little bit with that. And it, if anything, it, it protects your table a little bit. All of this stuff is water-based and it cleans up super easily. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk you through um, painting this tree. Now this um, specialty glaze, um, just basically we have to do three coats and covering the tree, I'm gonna open up that, we're gonna start with um, the tree part. Getting three solid coats on your tree. Um, sometimes people don't put enough coats. So what I like to do is I like to start with the underside of the tree, um, just because the paint will will um, fire will um, dry really fast, and we don't want to have to worry about underneath it. So that when we do the three coats on the front side, so I usually um, start by getting my brush a little bit wet in the water. And then I dry it off on the paper towel. Oh yes, the Hill family has the whole gigantic bottle because <laughs> they're doing three treats. <laughs> um, and we're gonna just start by really loading your brush nice and plump like this. 
and you're gonna paint your first coat. It doesn't have to be neat or anything like that. You just wanna make sure you go back and forth and really dunk back in your paint and make sure your brush is thick and loaded and paint the whole bottom. And I'm just gonna just kind of slop it on and you're gonna have to go back and forth to get into all those little crevices and just keep dipping back into your paint. And start on the bottom. Now on the bottom, I typically don't do three coats. Um, we'll probably just do two on the bottom underside of the leaves, um, mostly because this glaze moves so much. And sometimes when it drips, it um, drips into the kiln and or can stick to the some things in the kiln. But don't worry about that. It, we we watch for that. But um, yeah, two, we'll, we'll start with one coat and get the whole bottom of the tree and the, all the undersides of the branches. Now we're gonna be doing a couple more coats. So if you miss spots, that's okay. Just kind of work it in there. And if your brush is feeling dry, just dip it back into, you don't wanna be globbing it on, but you want to definitely have it go on wet. A lot of times people run out of paint and they just keep on painting with a dry brush and that's not gonna get color on your piece. So while it's white, I like to start with the underside of the branches because it might get a little bit hard to see once it's all just a big brown piece. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm just getting the underside. And you can rest it on the tip a little bit if that big tree's getting heavy. <laughs> and work your way around. On this first coat, it's really easy to tell, obviously, where you've been. Um, the second coat's a little trickier because it is all brown. You can also put your hand in the tree if that helps. And really just dab it on. It doesn't have to be super neat or anything like that. This glass green is so cool how it just like fills in the in in all the texture for you. Now, you'll notice that the paint will dry as you're painting it on. Keep going, kind of rotate, start from the um, one end, I'm gonna say from the bottom to the top, if you're going upside down. Don't get caught up in like, oh my gosh, it's dry, I, got it. I have to go put more on. You wanna get all the way to the bottom and then your second coat will truly be just a second coat. Because if you keep going back, you'll lose track of your coats. Um, so yeah, get from top to bottom. And the good news is it'll probably be dry at the top when you're at the bottom and you can kind of put a little, a light second coat. I usually get my brush just a little bit wet. 
and do a light second coat on the bottom of the tree. And this way, if we get this part done, we don't have to worry about picking up our tree after when we're doing the upper, the top sides of the branches. We don't have to worry about picking it up to get back underneath here. So try to be a little bit methodical. Sometimes if you want, um, we'll be using the, two, the pipe cleaners later but when you do get to your second coat, sometimes what I'll do is I'll stick the pipe cleaner in one of my holes so I know where I started. Because sometimes that way you'll know when you work your way around where you actually started. These specialty glazes are kind of hard to do anything wrong with them, except, yeah, not even. Except that as long as you do three coats um, or two to three coats, it depends. A lot of times people are very heavy handed. It's just like when people who drive and they're heavy with their speed <laughs> on the pedal. Um, painters are all different in how much they load the brush. Some people glop it on and you're like, whoa, two coats is more than enough. And other people could possibly even do a fourth and they'd be fine. So it's kind of relative, a general, a general rule. I'm looking in the camera and it looks like a snowy tree at this point, <laughs> a snowy brown tree. So with this specialty glaze, another thing that's a little bit different about it is that um, the reason, and one of the reasons we do three coats um, is that it, we can't, it's a reactive glaze. So it will react um, in the, in the, with most any other product, like any other paint color. Um, we've had people try to put snowy white on the tips of the branches and the snow turns blue and the white turns blue. Um, we've had, yeah, it, this is a very reactive glaze. And um, so we can't dip it in our clear glaze, which we do with most pieces. And so this, that's why you have to do three coats so that it's a really nice sealed, sealed finish. If you ever need to unmute and um, stop me or anything like that, just let me know. I kind of will just watch a little bit and see when I think somebody's ready for the next step. And I'll just mention that. And then um, hopefully you can either know what to do when you get to that step or just ask me when you get there if you have any questions. So when you are ready for, when you've got your two coats on the underside, you can set it on your plate and start at the top of your tree and work your way down. At this point, we're not gonna worry about um, getting paint in the holes. You just wanna get a nice first coat on the whole thing. Fill in all that white and use your, stay somewhat cleaner if you use your plate to turn the piece. Hi, it's Stacy. So on the underside, the, the very bottom, we did two coats and then should I do another coat on the underside to bring it to three? 
Um, you can go ahead and just, it usually takes the second coat a little bit longer to dry. So I would start and go ahead and do, um, you're only on the very, very bottom, you're gonna only want two coats on that very, this bottom, bottom of the tree. Um, yeah. but, so on your first coat, when you're doing your first coat on the overside, just kind of do that, flip it on the bottom and get that third coat on the bottom um, on the parts of the leaves you can see. So I'm gonna come closer. So when I'm doing my top side of the leaves, when I'm yeah. working my way around, I'll just kind of get the bottoms too. Okay, perfect. That way you Thank can get you. that last coat without having it all upside down. Okay. Because it tends to be a little bit wet on that sec, getting that second to third coat, it doesn't dry quite as fast and we don't want to have to hold it like that. Great. Thank you. Uh-huh. And Jen, I know you have that giant tree. So if I'm going too fast, let me know. <laughs> I probably should have done the gigantic tree because I, I go too fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm quick. <laughs> I think you've had more practice than I have. I haven't <laughs> painted it in a while. <laughs> Well, the good news is this is just kind of like dabbing it on. But yes, I will. I'll wait for everybody. All right. I don't want to slow anybody down, though. I have a good memory. No, it's it's all good. You're right, though. It's hard to tell where you were once you start getting it brown. Yes, so that's why I stick my little pipe cleaner in there, and yeah. that's kind of my starting point. And yeah, you kind of have to somewhat concentrate. <laughs> Can't when we do this in class and we have music and cookies and all of that. Everybody's always like, "Hmm, I'm not sure where I start." <laughs> <laughs> I'm distracted. Because it is one of those projects that it is easy to just have a conversation and talk while you're doing it because you're just laying down color. Yeah. So I've got my first coat on the top of my leaves and I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent dry, but um, you'll notice that it's um, soaking in and um, when it's not shiny, it's ready for the second coat. So usually, after the first coat, by the time you make your way all the way around the tree after the first coat, if you start back at the top, it's usually ready for your second coat. It's between the second and third coat that it takes a bit longer. Um, I usually tell people um, doing coats is sort of like putting on nail polish. <laughs> you really want to make sure you're not just moving around the first coat. So that's why we let it dry. Um, so you wanna let the coat dry and then always have a loaded brush and you're just laying on that next layer. So you're gonna refill your brush every few brush strokes so that it goes on and it has that shine again. You don't want it to be gloppy, but you want it to go on wet. So if your brush makes noise and it's whispering at you like making kind of a scratchy noise that means it's probably too dry you can just dip back in we should have given you plenty of color for you to be able to dip back in and lay on you also don't want to work 
overwork an area because then if you if it rewets this first coat um you just end up kind of pulling off that coat so if you load your brush nice with a lot of color and you just lay it on then you're putting a nice second coat so usually just one or two brush brushes brush strokes in each area will get you a nice layer. Sometimes when people don't put enough color, it's called the piece will come out starved. Um, and that is when it just doesn't have enough color on it. And um, I don't think it's ever been a problem when I'm explaining it to people. Sometimes then they want to put a lot more paint. Um, but Sometimes when people are like worried about putting too much on there, it comes out a little starved. And that's usually with just one coat or just not paying attention to where they were. And it's okay if you fill in the holes with paint um, at the very um, at the very end, before you're completely done and before it's completely dry, we'll use the the um, pipe cleaner to kind of clean out our any glaze that are in, is in the holes. And by clearing it out, they won't get clogged. Because all of this is actually all a chemical reaction in the kiln, and it is actually. It's like glass when it comes out. So we can unplug the holes. It's just not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Jen, Ann said that you were wanting to do this for years. Yep. <laughs> Glad you finally got to do it. Oh, I finally got to do it. The COVID year, of course. <laughs> well, it'll be a memorable one. Yes. I just sent a picture to her that we were doing this, so. Oh, good. Yeah. I should take a picture of you. <laughs> she, she was up in, the, up in the mountains when I stopped by to pick up the tree, but I got to see the rest of the crew, so that was cool. Uh-huh. She taught a class on Friday they wanted me to come to. Do you remember what that would have been? This past um, Friday? Yeah. Um, she actually had to cancel the most recent class. Oh, because of the change? Um, yeah. Um, so I think... Well, no, I think she just wasn't feeling well. It turned out to be nothing, but... Um, she um, wasn't feeling well, so she just wanted to be sure. We just didn't want any. Oh, you know. that's good. That's good. Yeah. We, so we just kind of said it was not the right time. Yeah. So you can probably still take that class if you want to do it. Oh, another. good. Because the, uh, the other Jen was going to do it too. So. Yeah. Yeah, we need everybody to stay healthy. Yes. One of our other friends, so Anne was in my wedding, and one of our other friends that's in Texas that was in the wedding, she is in the hospital with COVID right now down in Texas. Oh, no. Is it and a it serious case? It is pretty serious, um, and she's only 55. I just talked to her. We got to keep, gotta keep healthy. Yeah, 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 definitely. It was a big surprise to her how that all went, so. We, uh we like would like to reopen. <laughs> yes, yes, so, yeah. we we can do that if everybody just takes care of each other. Yeah. Open. So I don't know exactly where everyone's at, but when you get to the second coat on the top side of the tree, then. Um, 
Oops. Uh oh, she said oops. What does that mean, everybody? I don't know. My phone just said uh, low battery and it's plugged in, so I'm just gonna double check. That it's plugged in. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> thought it was a paint oops. <laughs> no, not a paint oops at all. Okay, we can't have. Um, we can't have that. Can't have low battery. I don't know why it said that. Um, anyway. Uh, yes, we are going to let it dry thoroughly and work on our base when we get to the second coat. So after you get that second coat on there, let me know. And when somebody's ready, I will explain the base. I'm all about efficient painting. So while we're waiting, I cannot sit. I'm a very impatient person. I can't sit and watch my tree just dry. So um, I have to work on something to keep me from messing with it. So um, just one question. So when we're doing our second coat, is that when we do the underneath of the leaves too, or do we wait? Um, you can do a little, just to kind of brush up under there too, just to get uh, okay. that last coat on there. Okay. Because usually two coats is enough because it kind of um, moves down underneath anyway. Um, but yeah, two coats plus a couple brush strokes on from when you're doing that second or first or second coat uh, okay. gets in enough coverage. Yep. Okay. So you can kind of set that aside. On the base, so anywhere, so the base, we're not using a specialty glaze, we're using normal glaze. And on the base, um, they don't, this is not something you have to do, um, but I did give you the holly and I'm just gonna show you that design. So um, depending on what tree you have, you can decide how you want to use this holly. Um, this pink paper is what um, I always called magic paper. Emma knows about this stuff. Um, so it's the magic paper. Now, if you want to take it apart or however, whatever works best for you, I'm going to take one of them and you can arrange them however you want, but take one. And this is, um, this pink paper, we call it magic because it transfers the design onto your pottery. So if you have a ballpoint pen, a pencil will work, but a ballpoint pen is, has a bit of a harder tip. If you, trace the design and just go right over it. It will transfer. It's very faint, but it will transfer onto your pottery. So it just gets that holly shape onto your pottery. Um, I don't know if you can see, it's probably not gonna show up, but you, you'll see, um that it'll transfer and if you have a regular pencil pen, regular pencil burns away so sometimes i can see it but sometimes i'll go over it just to make sure you know with a pencil just so i can see my lines but it's really gonna no matter what it will burn away so you can kind of work your way around and add the holly however you want now this little notch right here just to keep in mind is where the cord goes so it's going to be the back of your base, I would imagine. <laughs> so where the cord will come out the backside. So it's good to think about that. I've had people put their name on this tree base and you don't wanna put it where the cord's coming out. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind if, the, if you wanna do anything like a name or, or if you just wanna make sure there's one holly right on the front, that's Fine too. Now this pink paper can be used a couple times, more than once. So you can work your way around and get as many bits of holly on your piece as you'd like. And a funny thing about this holly, or the magic paper, sometimes if you can't see it very well, 
Um, you can do this at home, <laughs> but if you kind of breathe on it, <laughs> if, if you get it warm, it shows up a little bit better. For some reason, sometimes the pottery people have had it in their car and it's really freezing cold and it doesn't show up as well. So something about the heat, um, when you warm it up, it shows up a little bit better. So sometimes I'll just kind of, can't do that anywhere. I can't breathe heavily anywhere, <laughs> but at home. <laughs> Mine's pretty faint, so I'm tracing over it while I can see it. I'm just getting some And I'm just kind of turning it so that I get different poly facing different directions. And I don't know if you can see, I just kind of worked my way around. Now, anywhere you don't paint at all is going to be white and shiny because on the base, we will dip it in our clear glaze. So with your liner brush, if you want to get that just a little bit wet, um, and I um, would start by painting the leaves with the green. And if you just um, use the very tip of your brush and paint in all your leaves, It's okay if it's not exactly the way it went down on your piece, but uh, the, it, the you don't have to paint perfectly inside the lines. Having some personality and charm is part of a hand painted piece. And so, Kind of work your way around and I would probably go around and do probably two coats on the green so work your way around once and then twice so that it gets a nice pretty dark green on your piece one coat you might see your brush strokes a little bit which isn't a bad thing, but um, for this, I think it might look pretty if it was a little bit more solid. I'm usually all about the watercolor and um, not having lots of coats. Um, so I, I usually don't try for three coats, but two will give it a, a little bit of richness. So I'm kind of 
outlining it and then kind of filling it in. And again, I always tend to refill my brush so often so that I'm not just painting with a dry brush. I'm almost dropping the paint on my piece. with that very tip, just kind of dropping it on. Now, if you want, you can do other things too. Like if you have other thoughts on how you wanted to design this space, you absolutely can. Like if you only want two things of holly or you just thought it would be pretty to go all the way around. Like I said, I've had some people put a family, like a name. And if you want to do a name or something like that, um, I would do it first in pencil and make sure you like how it fits. Um, you don't want to erase, you just want to draw really lightly with pencil and sketch it on. Um, and then once you have it the way you, the way you like it, then you can um, go back with the liner brush. And I did give you black, but you can do whatever color, obviously. And then um, you can paint your letters. Now this is again, it dries super fast. So by the time you get around, you can probably do your second coat of your green. Are you doing okay, Jen? Yeah. Are you, what, where are you at? I'm trying to figure out what to put on my base there. Okay. I'm determined maybe to put a so, raven instead of a holly. Um, now, if you want to do anything else, you can always sketch with pencil. You don't want to erase, but just draw lightly and you can sketch. Um, most of the bases have like a rim around the bottom. Uh -huh. You are welcome to paint like, um, that a solid red or a solid green, or you could do stripes of different colors, like, you know, black, you could do red and white for like kind of candy cane stripe. Um, that bottom rim is a nice place to add some personality too. So you can decide how, you, however you want to do that. Stacey, I, you don't have to unmute, but um, let me know if you need anything or if you're, so I can't tell if you're keeping up or not. Yep, no, I'm, I'm working um, around the bottom of the base with my holly leaves. Perfect. First coat, so I haven't started the second yet. Sounds good. Thank you. Just yeah, making sorry, sure. I, don't have, I don't have a camera. No, it's totally fine. I just want to make sure we don't don't leave you behind. <laughs> Thank you. Now, for those of you who are um, thinking about doing your berries, um, a fun, easy way to do the berries is to use the wrong side of your brush, the handle of your brush. Um, and you dip it in your paint and then you just make a dot with the back side of your brush and that drops on pretty thick so it makes a nice perfect little holly berries um, if you want gigantic berries you could use 
the back of your pen, like the back of your pencil or eraser or something like that. Um, this liner brush has a nice, a nice small handle. So if you want the three little berries, you can just dip in the paint and make your dots. Are we supposed to do two or three coats of the um, green and red? Um, if you want them really solid, you can do um, three coats of the green. Um, I did two, but um, but if you want it nice and solid, you should do three. Um, I'm going to say that if you do three, like I am going to say this next thing would be totally optional. You do have a little bit of black, and if you feel comfortable um, with the liner brush and doing nice thin, thin lines, um, I'll show you what it looks like, but you can do, you can, um, I'm going to come close to the camera, you can outline it a little bit by putting a little line right up the center, I'm doing it backwards, and a little loose, I don't always try to outline perfectly, but just a couple swoops of color. I don't necessarily connect it perfectly. It's just a few swoops, like gestures of color. Can you see that? One coat of the black. Yeah, just one coat of the black at the end. But make sure you do all your coats, whatever, two or three coats of green first. And Sometimes if you get just a little bit of water on your brush and take a little bit of black and draw it out, sometimes it helps to make it a little inky, like I'll sometimes use the cap and make it just a tiny bit thinner. Um, if you have a, a, you know, something off to the side, like a paper plate or something like that, you can always do that off to the side on your, just to get the black paint a little bit thinner and then I'll do it in the camera again when they come up close. <laughs> do, do, do. Here we go. I will do a little line up the center and then and even if it's a little wacky it kind of gives it a little bit of um, texture. Can you You're using that? that brush right? I'm using the same liner brush. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And the black will dry really quickly to a light gray. Um, don't worry, it will fire. You don't have to do a whole bunch of coats of it. How dark does it get when it fires? The black will be a nice dark black. And this green is a very good Christmassy green. And even though the red looks pink, it will be red, Christmassy red. And you can kind of decide if you like the idea of outlining your leaves or not. I think it kind of adds a little something. Those without.
And I usually start from the base of the leaf in the direction it would grow. <laughs> just sometimes that just helps me get my lines. I'm using the liner brush for all of the, the base. Now, if you're going to paint the whole bottom, you might want to clean out your tree, tree brush. Get all that paint out of there. I'll paint it red. And by the time we're done with this base, it will be time to put our third coat on our tree. Now the base, all the white areas will, will be glazed and um, so they'll be all bright and shiny white. And on the bottom of your tree, you're gonna to wanna to sign it. And if it's gonna go down in history, I would put the date on it. Because mm -hmm. these trees do tend to find their way generations down the line. And that would be really fun to see for somebody to say, you made it in 2020 the year of the pandemic. So I'm just going to leave it like that. If we have a lot of extra paint, we send it back to you, right? And you could reuse it maybe? That, that would be great. We just don't want you to ever end up with not enough paint. So yeah, we tend to send you with a ton of paint. And if you would pack it up and just send it back when you bring your tree in for firing, um, that would be amazing. Okay. We sanitize all the containers and all that kind of stuff, but it does help us a lot to make sure that we, when we do get it back, we appreciate it. Do most of you a lot have a lot of paint left over? Yeah, okay. I'm like that with food too. <laughs> I don't like when people don't have enough. <laughs> We've had to really readjust and figure out how to get all these people taking their projects home. Um, and just figure out what what is needed and it's amazing these size pots um, this size right here we have a lot of these strips they hold more paint than you would ever imagine <laughs> most projects can be done with these strips of paint
Carrie, can I ask you, Emma, are you, do you know if Emma's going to be, are, Emma, are you going to be doing the, um, the wood sign or what are you guys thinking about that? I'm pretty sure. So Monday's her birthday. So uh -huh. what I was yeah. going to, I was going to email you tonight. Work was just busy. We're definitely going to do the class, but if she decided not to do it live, if I oh, told her in the yes. afternoon, could you do a video? Oh, of course, of course, totally. We're definitely not as doing a credit or anything. We definitely want to do it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. What is it? What kind of board art is it? It's a welcome sign. Cool. Is it um, too late to add me to do it with her? Could I? Um, no, not at all. No, okay. you can do it. I'll email you tonight. But yeah, I think just let me know if you want to. Yes, yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm just waiting to hear from others to see if um, they're going to be doing it or not. So yeah, I just, when I make all the decals and stuff, um, it's just helpful to know. I haven't done that yet. So yeah, totally. Yeah, board art is one of my favorite things to do. Cool. Well, happy birthday, Emma, in advance. Thanks. Yeah. That's cool. Emma has been coming to all of my classes for a very long time. She's That's a pro. Awesome. <laughs> Maybe she can be like one of your next. Years. Yeah. You're going to get paid to teach classes one day, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how it goes. Tamar, what did you do to the bottom of yours? You just so painted the I... bottom part red. I just painted the bottom part red with a couple, three coats. Okay. I only have two coats at this point and I would probably do two coats if you want to do that. We'll do the tree and then I would probably come back and do that third coat just because it just um, for drying time and all that kind of thing. All right. Yeah, that was a lot of paint, wasn't it? I have, I did, I was working off of the same, I wanted to make sure. So I was working off the same amount we gave you guys and I have a lot left over. So um, make sure you sign your piece. We'll have a lot of green trees, <laughs> at least the base at this point. Um, but now um, you can go back to your tree and put that last coat on it with your big brush. And again, it's more like, you know, really laying it on there. I'm gonna wet my brush and stir it up. And I'm gonna come close, doo, doo, doo. really put it on wet. And don't linger in one spot. Laying the next coat on top. I always find that you can't help yourself from doing a little bit on the bottom side when you're doing this. So that's why I only do two coats to the bottom side because it always ends up with too much if I don't, if I do that third coat. And I think you'll all be happy and amazed with the fact that this will not look like a dead tree like it does right now. It will be a beautiful glass green.
On that big tree, Jen, does it work to have the plate at all? Not really. No, okay. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> heavy piece. I just kind of had to stand up a lot and I got some exercise. Muscle your way through it. Yep. It'll be worth it. You said don't put your name where the cord goes. So are you saying to put it, where, do, well, where you would you put it? Are you writing your name on the bottom like so people can, so you can see it? No, I'm just writing it so that you guys will know it's mine after it comes out of the kiln. Oh, then you, then you can put it wherever on the underside okay. um, and that won't matter. I just had somebody once, um, it was just in the main studio, so we weren't kind of paying attention to everything they were doing, but they wrote like really beautifully. They wrote, you know, the Smith family in a beautiful script right on the side that had the cord coming out. Oh, so um, it interfered with it. Yeah, I see. Yeah. You so put the I was, cord against the wall or something. Yeah, so it, their name probably ended up being on the back side. If we accidentally got the brown reactive stuff on the bottom of our base, is that going to cause a havoc when it gets fired? No, you should okay. be fine. Okay. It's just a little spot, but. <laughs> Phone does not like this charger. Did you say we're supposed to take the pipe cleaners and start doing these holes now or? Yes, we... so it's much easier to do it while it's a little bit wet. Um, you can just kind of go around and just kind of scrub them out a little bit. It's much easier when it's wet than it is when it gets um, um, dry. So yeah, just kind of go all the way around and clean out the holes. Make sure they're not clogged up. And it's a good time too, because you still have your paint out. So sometimes when it's too dry, um, you'll knock off a whole, like a chunk of paint um, when you are cleaning it. So at least right now it's a little wet. So it just kind of moves. And um, if you, you still have your paint out. So if you need to touch it up at all, you can. So um, let's see, we already talked about the fact that um, we would love to get any leftover paints and your brushes and all that back. Um, I would wait and let this dry, you know, overnight. Um, let's see, the next few days we're open, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're open 10 to five. Um, we'll be back, we'll be closed on Thanksgiving <laughs> and we'll be back open at 10 o'clock on, um, on Friday and um, Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be back um, back open after Thanksgiving. Um, and you can bring it by and turn it in. So let it dry overnight. And um, when you pack it up, I usually just put a few paper towels in between um, the, the piece and the bag or the piece and um, the cardboard if we gave you a box. Um, just because you just don't want it to rub up against it um, in like while it's riding in your car. So just a little paper towel kind of protects it in, in transit. Um, yeah, and I would just kind of wrap that in a little paper towel and it'll be good to go. And we'll fire them for you and they will be ready in a week after you bring them back. And they will come with the cord and all the little bulbs 
the bulbs, um, I recommend putting a little dab of glue to hold them in. Um, they'll stay, but I think um, they hold better with just a tiny little dab of glue. Um, if anyone is interested, um, we have this no fire snow. I think I kind of mentioned in the beginning, sometimes people want snow on the ends of their branches. Um, with the glass green, because it's reactive, we've had people put white on their, on their trees and it turns blue and that's not snow. <laughs> um, so we do have this um, product, it's called no fire snow and it's kind of gritty and it goes on to your piece after it's fired. It goes on just um, like acrylic paint, but it's a little chunkier. So you can kind of scrape on snow onto your leaves if you want. So it comes in a little container like this. This is more than enough. You can put snow on everything in your house. <laughs> but um, but if you want, would like to do that, you can do that. You can get that as well when you come pick up. Beautiful for giving color. I think you'll be happy when you see it finished. I'll be happy either way. I enjoy this. Um, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep putting coats on the finishing coat on this and um i probably i don't know how much snow we're supposed to get tomorrow but i think i might come in tomorrow bring it in tomorrow perfect yeah and then we'll have it fired in just like within a week for sure okay um and then yeah thank you so much for coming thank you so much for having it i loved it yeah thank you guys good it's yeah. really fun well, have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe and healthy, and um, we'll see your, your trees soon. Okay. <laughs> see right. you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.